Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today I'm doing another video. Now today I'm doing an interview and I'm going to be interviewing Mark who's recently appeared on The Apprentice on BBC One. So today Mark's going to be talking about his time on the show and what it was like being in the boardroom with Lord Sugar. So please welcome Mark. Hello, I'm Mark Mosley, recently seen on The Apprentice 2023. Uh, my business is Pest Gone Environmental and I've got a pest control book out at the moment called Pest to Peace. Thank you so much for joining me, Mark. So today we're going to be chatting about your time on The Apprentice, about your business and also about some memories you might have from the show as well. So to start off the interview, I wanted to ask you, why did you decide to go on the show in the first place? Um, so... I'd never seen the show before and I'd hurt my ankle playing football uh, the week previously and it was a Thursday night and I thought I'm not going to risk my ankle this uh, Thursday so I'm going to sit in and watch a bit of TV and it happened to be The Apprentice and I thought oh, I've seen it or I've heard of this program so um, basically I watched an episode and I thought oh these lot are stupid I've got a business do you know what I'll give it a go and uh, I'll see how I get on and that weekend they asked me down for an audition and then that day, I had eight hours worth of interviews and auditions, and somehow I managed months later to get on the show. So it was um, just a spare of the moment. My business was doing well, and I thought I'd just try something different. And uh, yeah, I couldn't believe it when they rang me up on my 39th birthday and said, you're on. And I was thinking, oh, no. And I was away in Sri Lanka, and I had to get a business plan in by the 4th of April. And my flight back from Sri Lanka was on the 30th of March. So I had four days to get this business plan in. I panicked all weekends, but uh it didn't need it in the it wasn't needed in the end sorry yeah it sounds like your journey onto the show like a kind of was a bit manic at the end but it was really good that you got the chance to go on and what i loved as well was that you in some ways it kind of just happened you were like you said you watched the telly you saw it and i feel like when something like that happens it's always a nice surprise so i want to fast forward a few months now so when you found out you're on the show apart from obviously you panicking about whether you're going to get your business plan done how did it feel to know that you were going to appear on tv and be on such an iconic tv show um i didn't realize how iconic it was until i looked at the ratings and when i said there or see there was millions of viewers i started to panic a little bit and i was thinking oh no i'm really exposing myself and my business um and then when i spoke to other people actually in the house other candidates they'd applied three four five times i couldn't believe it and it was just my first time but i don't know when they told me that i'd you know was on the show and I'd be uh, in front of millions of people. It is very, very scary. And I think the public are quite ruthless. And I thought that's what was going to be happening. Um, but to be fair, most of the public um, has been quite nice to me. And uh, But yeah, it was very scary when they told me I was on the show. And uh, I've been in the military and been in some scary situations. But uh, that was up there, to be fair, when I thought, I'm going to be in front of the public eyes. Yeah, I think it's always kind of a bit of a weird situation when you know that so many people are going to be watching you. So I'm well done for doing it, first of all, because I know it must have been quite a scary situation to be in. So obviously in the first episode, um, we saw everybody come together and do the first task. And one big thing from that was that you all got to go kind of on a little holiday i mean i don't know whether you consider it as a holiday um but you got to go to antigua so what was it like getting to go abroad for the first task well i remember we had to quarantine for a week in our hotel because covid was still about so i got put into a hotel um right in central london near oxford street and uh, we got given a set menu to order food on that first night after that boredom and so i quickly looked to see where the restaurants were and i see there was one in gatwick and there was one up in newcastle so i thought oh we're definitely going away somewhere and then when he said to Antigua, I'd already told like the boardroom that I'd been to 100 countries and I thought, oh, this is going to make it 101. And when he said Antigua, uh, I just sort of sat there and I was the only one who didn't sort of start jumping around. Like all the other candidates were screaming and yes, and I just sat there. I thought, play this quite cool and be businesslike. And then when I walked outside into the lobby, I was like, get in there. So, um, yeah, that was quite uh, fun. And then when we got there, it was just work. Um, we basically got put into our rooms. Uh, we didn't really enjoy it, uh, the beach at all, except on the last day, they give us um, three hours to go and sit on the beach, which was quite nice. But um, yeah, running around Antigua trying to sell them tickets. What an absolute nightmare that was. But we didn't stop laughing, us and the boys. But yeah, another country off the list. So 101 countries. It sounds like it was quite the experience and obviously as a viewer watching it I was kind of thinking did you get a day or two to just chill but by the sounds of it you didn't so um, it sounds like it was an interesting one but it's great like you said that you got to go to another country so you mentioned earlier that um, you have to live in like the apprentice house when you're on the show so what is it like living alongside all your fellow candidates for such a long period of time? I think uh None of us candidates would have probably ever met in other circumstances. We've all got very different backgrounds, um, but 
yeah, oh, straight away, we all started getting well. I really bonded with my roommates, which was uh, Kevin, Avi and Sahal. We've become very close and we speak every day. And it was nice learning about everyone else's business. There was no one in the process who was sort of, um, who showed off. Like my business and so much a year, everyone was just very down to earth and uh, getting to live with them was an experience there was no arguments and we always said whatever happens in the boardroom stays in the boardroom and before we went into certain boardrooms i'd always say to the candidates if i knew i was going in against them i'd just say like go for me and whatever happens just go for me and i'll fight my corner and then it all just stays in there and that's how it was so someone would go at me in the boardroom like me and reese went a uh, week four we were going at each other as soon as we walked out that boardroom we just give each other a big hug um so it was quite nice but living in the house with the other candidates it was fun a lot of fun i lived with uh, a lot of people in the military when on operations in the middle east and it was sort of very similar to that except we had uh, a luxurious mansion to live in yeah the apprentice house looked gorgeous i think a lot of people were very jealous you got to live there and one thing that i really like to hear is that you know like you said in the boardroom whatever was said there stayed there and it's good to hear you all got on regardless of what went on in the task beforehand so talking of tasks what would you say would be your favorite task and why uh my favorite task was dubai just because um it was a, another little holiday and uh i really enjoyed it i'd worked out this is probably something I shouldn't say, but I'd worked out that whichever team had the most people on it, they were going to lose the task. So, and if there was ever the team had the same amount of numbers on it, whichever team Karen followed, that was likely the team going to lose. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but um, yeah, it was. Uh, so when Karen sort of, we had six v six, and Karen came to follow us in Dubai. I thought, ah, oh, we've lost this task. And then Megan went down with seasickness and Sahal um, hit his head um, and got concussion. So uh, I think they gave us the task in the end. But um, yeah, Dubai was my favourite because I liked doing the DJ masterclass, uh, singing on the boat to uh, this very famous beauty brand. So uh, Dubai was my favourite one. I have to say, as a viewer, Dubai was one of my favourites as well. And like you said, with um, like Megan getting seasick and all the other events that happened, it was definitely a chaotic one, but it was really cool to see. And it looked like both the experiences that both the teams did was something that loads of people enjoyed as well so i don't know how they film the show exactly but is the tasks like back on back are they like constantly filming or do you get any days off just to chill in the house um if the tasks are in the uk so the boardroom would always be on a, a sunday and then we'd have monday off and then tuesday wednesday would be a task thursday boardroom Friday, Saturday task, Sunday boardroom, Monday off. But uh, for Antigua, they gave us um, a couple of days off, and that was about a week in total. And Dubai, they gave us a couple of days off after that one. But any task, it would be back-to-back two tasks, one day off. Um, so it was relentless. I remember week five, we were up at half three in the morning, and I remember walking back to the house at 11.30 at night, and I was just absolutely shattered. And they said, oh, food's here, dinner's here. And I was like, I'm going to bed. And then they called us again at half four in the morning the next day. So sleep deprivation is such a big thing. Um, but that's why it's meant to test you. Two is we've got the most resilience and two can keep going because people just start flagging. People get antsy with each other. Um, but that's what makes a good show. Yeah, you're right. And I think, like you said, I guess if you can get through those early mornings and late nights, it shows that you can definitely be a great person in the business world. So for those couple days that you got off, what did you guys do? Were you allowed to go out and do stuff around London or were you told that you had to stay inside the house no so basically um i wouldn't say you're a prisoner joe is really into his fitness you used to see joe just walking around the house so you'd be sat there in the living room reading a book and joe would just walk past the window then he'd walk past the window again uh he was like a caged animal but we got to go up to Hampstead heath um which was about a 200 meter walk up the hill uh twice a day and we played football um but they had all our wallets they had uh, all our phones we had nothing so we couldn't go down to the shop and buy anything anyway so um but the days off we just talked to each other we learned so much about each other's families business partners and uh i think that bonded us so much and that's why we're all so close now we'll probably all start distancing ourselves over time now but um yeah at the moment we're all just good friends and we speak most days i'm going on holiday with uh, three of the candidates in uh, may um but the days off it was just talking about life and learn about each other's businesses oh that sounds wonderful and it's always great to hear when people are so close as well so speaking of your fellow candidates who was your favorite person to work with and why um my favorite person to work with i think danny 
because she was so funny and she was relentless. Um, when we were selling tickets, she just did not stop. We, we'd been selling tickets for six hours in Shropshire and she just did, she was like a bulldozer. She kept just going to everyone. So Danny was probably my favourite because she was so funny. Um, and Marnie was very good. Like Marnie and Sahal as well on week five. Uh, She's a great person. We just, again, I like to have a lot of fun on task and they're my sort of sense of humour. Danny, Marnie, Sahal, Reese, and Brad. We just laughed a hell of a lot. So um, they were the ones I like working with, but Danny was probably my favourite. Yeah, they all sound wonderful. And I know watching it as a viewer, you could see how everybody kind of got on and they're all individually amazing. So the boardroom we spoke about earlier. So obviously on TV, it's made to be seen as very intense and very scary. And I wanted to know, is it like that in real life or is it a little bit more toned down when you're there? No, it's scarier in real life. I mean, that first one, Boredom Zero, I was bricking it. And we walked in that first one and we waited for Lord Sugar to come through. And I was so sort of panicked. You're sitting around all these 17 other business people and everyone's fighting for this investment. And it was scary, but at the same time, a little bit exciting. And then as the process went on, I think by the time it got to about week five or six, I was sort of used to it. Not used to it, but, you know, you sort of get comfortable and you think, ah, and you know if you've won or lost the task. And it's more fun, in my opinion, if you've lost the task, you go to the calf and you've got to fight it out with each other. So I actually enjoyed it. So, um, but no, it is really scary. And I feel for all the uh, future apprentice candidates who are probably going in in the next uh, month or two starting to film again. Yeah, it looked intense. It looked scary. I couldn't imagine being in that situation. So it's interesting to hear that in some ways, like you said, it's scarier in real life. And talking of like going to the cafe and stuff, one question I had about how they like edited it this year is that so you go in and you like find out who wins the task. And then do you do you all have to go to the cafe and then all come back up again? Yeah, that's right. So once you lose the task and you get told, like you're the losing team everyone gets in the vehicles and then you're straight around to the uh, calf they set the cameras up everyone in the calf gets told to get out the other punters uh, they shut the calf and then we walk in we get this cup of tea which has got some scum on the top i think that was done on purpose and then uh, no one really touches it. everyone's looking at it going Did you have a sip mark and you're going oh my god um but yeah and then we all just sort of sit there and try not to argue too much but sometimes it got a bit heated and I'd just sort of be a bit of a bystander and think, oh, I don't want, it's not really me to sort of get into arguments because it's no one's fault why the task is uh, won or lost because it can be swung either way. And um, it's, it's very difficult when you're on task. And yeah, Brighton task was one where I was in the bottom three and we tried everything uh, to sort of get items. But I think Karen may have manipulated some of the items in the shops, hide them up above her head and stuff. And we were like, oh, so, um, but yeah, the coffee shop, um, there's two of them apparently I only ever went to one but yeah you just get driven straight round from the boardroom straight to the calf and then straight out there straight back to the boardroom and then you're fighting it out oh that's really cool how they film it and it's nice that they do film it in the order that we see it on tv and like you said with like everybody arguing i mean you have the side where it's good tv but equally i'm like you i wouldn't want to get involved in the argument so i guess it was the right thing to do to just kind of let it happen so i wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about your business since leaving the apprentice so how has it been has it been popular has it not how has it really been for you yeah it's been okay i mean business to business i get asked to go and, uh, to a lot of events and things i haven't seen like a massive upsurge in sales but you know we i don't know we've got a couple of celebrities and mps that we look after and things for their pest control so that's sort of uh, been quite nice but uh, yeah for the business it's doing quite nicely it was doing nicely before the process and it's still doing quite nicely and uh yeah long may it continue the pest control industry is pandemic proof it's recession proof and uh, yeah it's not going anywhere anytime soon yeah i'm really happy that it's all going really well for you and like you said the pest control industry is relevant to everybody really i mean everybody needs it in their lives to kind of deal with certain situations so i wanted to ask you one final thing i wanted to know whether you had any memories or any stories or any moments that you wanted to share from your time on the apprentice um i think probably the funniest time would be we were off to the airport. We didn't know where we were going. And uh, me, Sahal and Marnie, um, for some reason, we just didn't stop laughing the whole way to uh, the Heathrow Airport. And everyone in the, the car, from the cameraman, the sound guy in the front, the taxi driver, we're all crying with laughter. And we didn't understand why. I don't know what, why we started laughing. We cried for laughter for 10 minutes. And when we got to Heathrow Airport, the taxi guy, guy said, why are we all laughing? And we went, 
we just don't know. And anyway, then we went off to Dubai and it was my favourite task. So uh, that was probably a memory that will live long in the memory. And Marnie and Victoria on that task, running upstairs, giving food to Huda Beauty and then coming back down and Victoria saying, I've wet myself upstairs. We've been laughing so hard because Marnie ate an oyster and it tried to come out of her mouth, I think, because she couldn't swallow it. And then they couldn't stop laughing. Victoria then sat in some mashed potato that wasn't shown and they came downstairs and Vic said, I've just wet myself upstairs and they couldn't stop laughing so that whole 48 hours probably the most memorable thing not just in the apprentice but probably in my life going forward oh thank you for sharing those memories it's so great to hear that everybody was smiling having a good time it's what we love to hear so mark thank you so much for giving up your time and chatting with me today i really appreciate it it's been a pleasure you're more than welcome and thank you to everybody who watched the interview i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you soon for another one bye guys